Welcome everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you for joining me. This is Vinyl Collection, episode number one. It's a new series that I'm starting. I wanna share some of the vinyls that I have in my collection with you. Now, if you know anything about me or my channel, then you know I have over 9,000 CDs and my channel predominantly does reviews for CDs and things like that. It's what I, I enjoy most in collecting, mostly just because there is more out there on that than there is in any other format. But uh, I do have vinyl collection, and so I want to share that with you guys. And I've got 10 of these here today that I want to go through that I think are really interesting. Some rarities, side projects, solo albums, stuff like that. But before we dive into that, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. And now I'm asking if you guys will do one more thing for me. If you find this video interesting or you know someone that would be interested in seeing it, please share the video. I'm trying to get the word out about my channel. That would really help. And of course, as I always say, if you hit subscribe, then you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music. Just like this, we're gonna take a look at uh, 10, uh, in, what I think are really interesting, unique vinyls uh, that I have in my collection. First up, Brian Johnson did a solo album, came out on MCA Records 1982, and uh, the thing is, it's not really a solo album because it's actually a best of from his previous band, Jordy. So this clamshell box is available if you want to pick this up. And this uh, album here, which is called Strange Man, is actually in here. It's the red album. It just has a different uh, album cover on it. But, uh, you know, M MCA wanted to capitalize on Brian Johnson's success having joined ACDC, the Back in Black album. So they gathered up all these Geordie songs. And then the problem is they were recorded in the 70s and they needed to make them current. So they embellished them with some synthesizer, guitar, stuff like that, remixed them, put it out for the 80s. And that's how you got this. So pretty cool. Um, no insert on mine or sleeve on mine. So I don't know if it ever came with one, but the version that I have uh, does not have that. Now, since I mentioned Jordy, I wanted to also mention Powerhouse because after Brian Johnson left Jordy, they did continue on, put out one more album, a really great one called No Sweat on the Neat Records label. And they were considered part of the new wave of British heavy metal. But when that one didn't really work for them, changed their name to Powerhouse and continued on. And uh, really great stuff, a little heavier than what Jordy was doing, a little more metal. And this one does not have an insert either, but what it did have is a press clipping um, thing. So like if you were, uh, you know, a, a right, did reviews, things like that, part of the press, you would get one of these. And I love it because it's, it, you know, it's typed up kind of a thing and it's got a photo in it. And so you're able to, uh, they give you, you know, the history of the band. It's before Wikipedia. This is how, you know, reviewers got their information on these guys. And so that one was on Ambush Records, uh, 1986. And um, just really good stuff, too, if you like a new wave of British heavy metal projects. Now, continuing on in that vein of, of metal, this is another really cool one, Wurzel. Uh, Motorhead guitarist, he did a uh, four song EP. It came out on GWR, maybe Gwar Records. Uh, this was 1987. And uh, very much in the Motorhead vein. Uh, this one here also does not have any kind of insert or anything with it. But, um, you know, he did branch out a bit on it and it's just fascinating. I really wish he had made a full length solo album and or, uh, you know, full CD kind of a thing. Cause that's just a four song EP, but it really is so good. And another one here, another new wave of British heavy metal group, Angel Witch. This one was hard to come by for me. Frontal Assault came out in 1986. Um, this one here, uh, you know, so they, they got popular because Metallica had covered the song Angel Witch and again, part of the new wave of British heavy metal and all that, but they changed lineups a bunch of times and um, even, you know, sound styles and stuff like that. And so I don't think they were able to really find the right niche uh, to become more popular. But this was their third album and it was sort of a return to form, but they had become a four piece after having been a trio before this. Next up, um, another project post, uh, you know, famous band. This is Richie Rano's band After Stars, Hellcats. So now this one here came out in 1987. Um, and uh, there's the back side of it. I've actually never opened it and taken it out of the cellophane. It still has the sticker on it there. Uh, reason being is I had previously ordered from Richie Rano's website a CD and it was a burn and a photocopy, not very good. 
Quality has sounded just fine, but um, I haven't had a need to open the vinyl for that reason, so I've just uh, hung on to it. And as I mentioned, I know these things aren't in pristine. I found it, and it's a you know, this is the version of cutouts that they used to do for vinyls, clipped corners. Sometimes they did the saw cuts too, like they did on the CDs. But, um, you know, I found it for a couple bucks, so I just picked it up, uh, sort of a thing to have it in the collection. And that was on Kino Classic Records. I just find it amazing that, you know, these labels that these things came out on, these really tiny labels. And unfortunately, a lot of this stuff was just under the radar, like this next one here. Sweet Pain, they made one album on Combat Records, a little bit bigger label there, but it featured uh, young Kelly Nichols on bass who would go on to play with LA Guns. Um, this one does have a sleeve, so uh, first I'll flip it over and, and let you see the back side of that. And it's very much in the vein of the, of the sound that was from 1985, um, you know, 80s rock kind of thing. And uh, Kelly Nichols is here on the, the corner there. You can see him there, and the back side just has the lyrics and what on it. Um, but yeah, if you like LA Guns and you like the, the 80s sound, uh, you would like that and I would recommend uh, checking that out. I, I was on, um, as I said, Combat, so I'm surprised that's never gotten a re-release on a Wounded Bird or um, I've actually asked Rock Candy Records to do it. I um, haven't gotten any feedback from them, but I, I would love it if they would do that one. So next one we've got here is a band called Scream and it's No More Censorship, came out in 1988. Okay, but the reason I picked this up here is that's a young Dave Grohl down there. Yeah, so he was the drummer for these guys from uh, 86 to 1990 before joining Nirvana. And again, this is, you know, the cutout version of it. Um, this one does have a sleeve on it. Get a cool, cool picture there of the guys. And then just, you know, lyrics on this side sort of a thing. So these guys, um, on, by this release at least, um, I would compare them to like Bad Brains. You know, they were... Uh, sort of roots rock, reggae, metal, all mixed into one sort of a thing. But the other ones um, didn't, this is the fourth record by them. So I had other records, and I think this might be the only one Dave Grohl plays on, I'm not sure. Um, but this one in particular, uh, I picked up and it uh, worked for me. I like the sound of this, this record. Um, so then the, the next one I wanna show you guys is Andy Taylor in Thunder. So he was the original guitar player um, for Duran Duran. And then he went rock, essentially, releasing this album in 1987. It was on MCA Records. But interestingly, the way that I found this is because Steve Jones plays with him on this. There's the two guys there. Um, and I'm a big Steve Jones fan. I love what he does, um, you know, his, his solo albums. He's played with Iggy, Lou Reed, so many different things that he's done. And it always just rocks it up just right. So um, Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols on that record. And it pulled me in. But following that, I really got into Andy Taylor. And I actually have since gotten a CD version of Thunder. This is an alternate album cover of it there. Uh, but the inside has everything on it. So you can pick this up now. Um, but uh, yeah, so you know, I start with the vinyl. And if I have the opportunity and I can get the CDs, I will get the CDs. Uh, just not always available. Next up. Night City, this is one I really like too. Now this is from 1977. So uh, this here, what, 43, 44 almost years, right? This is the Doors keyboard player, Ray Manzarek uh, band that he did, 20th Century Records. Uh, this one's cool, it's got an insert, well, it's got an insert, not a sleeve, the sleeve is blank, but it has a separate, let me pull it out here. Um, insert. Not sure why it's uh, they do this, if this is like so that you can replace the sleeve if it gets damaged, but you don't have to hurt the uh, the insert. But uh, maybe that's kind of like the way uh, I like jewel cases, because if they get cracked, you can replace the plastic. But the cardboard diggy packs, if they get damaged, then you're, you're you know, out of luck on those sort of things. You can't, you got to replace the whole thing. Um, but yeah, that one there was the kind of, to me, the closest sounding of the Doors uh, projects. The, you know, the guys went out and did, um, you know, jazz and all these other things. But this one here, Night City, really rocked it up right, at least on this first album here. All right, and the final one that I want to show you guys is this one, Brian May and Friends. It's called Starfleet Project. And the cool thing is, if you know anything about this, it actually features Eddie Van Halen on guitar. So you get Eddie Van Halen and Brian May on one album. I mean, what could be better? This was on EMI Records. It's a three-song EP. 
Now, they did it just for fun. Brian May was in a studio and these other four musicians were there and he just came up with this idea. He had been watching the show Starfleet, which is this British sci-fi show, and the theme song to it, and they basically turned it into like a, a long jam on here and made a rock version of it. And this one's got a cool insert in here too. Um, what I like about this one here is it shows, instead of the guys, it shows their guitars. So of course you got Eddie's there and Brian May's there, and I always thought that was kind of a cool way to do it uh, without really, really, you know, throwing the attention on who all the members are. But you had Eddie Van Halen, Alan Gratzer, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right, uh, Phil Chin and Fred Mandel on here. So cool project. And I um, was able to get a Japanese uh, release of this thing. And it comes in the replica, you know, sleeve style and everything, uh, you know, in here. Um, sort of just like what I was showing you there, fold out and whatnot. So uh, some of these I have gotten on CD and I do enjoy it that way, but I do have these vinyls. And so there's 10 vinyl albums, these rarity side projects, solo albums, things like that, that I love. I love searching out all the extra stuff. If I'm a fan of Motorhead, LA Guns, Nirvana, Queen, you know, ACDC, whatever, it's like I'm searching that stuff out and I'm, I'm looking for what these guys have done outside of that. Sometimes the stuff is on CD, sometimes it's not, it's only on the vinyl um, and you got to pick it up and stuff like that. So I do have these things and um, keep an eye out. I'll be doing uh, future episodes of this. I'll do another 10 vinyl at some time and uh, show you guys what I got. As a reminder, if you would uh, please comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. I'm certainly interested to hear if you've got any of these or you like any of these or this is uh, new and something you just learned about kind of a thing. And as just a quick reminder, again, if you find this video interesting and or you know someone that you think would enjoy it, please share it. I'm trying to get the word out about my channel. Those things would really help. All right, everyone, have a good day. Take care, and we'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.